our Bible is about our personal relationship with the author. As background on the essentiality of God's Spirit interpreting the word for us, let's look at a few verses. Let's begin in Acts 18,24-25, with a Jew named Apollos, who had just arrived in Ephesus. He was a man who had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and was fervent in spirit, although he had not yet been baptized with the Spirit, but he spoke and taught the things about Jesus accurately, although he knew only John's baptism. We read this in Acts 18:28, for he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Christ was Jesus. I bring this up because it reflects on my own life as a new Christian, and perhaps you can relate to it. Experiencing the great forgiveness that Jesus' propitiation offered, a heartfelt enthusiasm that I was quick to share as it surged from my mouth. I couldn't wait to tell everybody about what had happened to me. I was fortunate in that I had a good mentor who led me into word studies, helping me to acquire a rough understanding of the gospel, but I made many errors along the way and perhaps even lost a few souls who remained captured in the kingdom of darkness by my ineptness in scripture, fostered by an unintentional lack of Christian maturity, and that is precisely the reason for this morning's Breakfast Bible Bites, so that we may be able to give a biblical answer to anyone who asks about the faith that is within us, and it should be done with the object of participating with the Holy Spirit in leading them to the exit ramp off of the broad highway that leads to the lake of fire. The narrow gateway is the only way that leads to salvation, where we also may find forgiveness and become productive for the kingdom. To accomplish this task, we must all lean, fully on the Holy Spirit, His gifts, and calling, coupled with the living Word of God. The inspired Word of God is plenipotentiary. This word plenary is one that we should put in our vocabulary since it means that God's Word is unconditional, unlimited, unrestricted, absolute, complete, sweeping, comprehensive, and we can have faith in its inerrancy. What is the Word, or perhaps a better question is who is the living Word of God? We read in John chapter 1 that the living word is Jesus. John 1 colon 1 3 informs us that, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God too he was with God in the beginning 3 all things were created through him, this passage along with Revelation 19 13 is essential to teach the seeker respect for the Bible. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 13 speaks of Jesus and reveals his true name in the heavenly realm, he wore a robe stained with blood, and his name is the Word of God. We read in Hebrews 4 12 13 For the Word of God is living and effective and sharper than any double edged sword, penetrating as far as the separation of soul and spirit, joints, and marrow. It is able to judge the ideas and thoughts of the heart. 13 No creature is hidden from him, but all things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Truth is not a personal matter of taste, but its substance, is an objective matter of fact, truth exists whether it is discernible or not, it is unchangeable in nature, God's word is truth. If we are to discern real truth, we must be willing to give up our subjective preferences in favor of objective facts that can be discovered through spiritual insight, logic, evidence, and real science. If anyone is to believe in Jesus, we must believe in the plenary word of God. Jesus proclaimed in John 17:17, 17, 17, Sanctify them by the truth, your word is truth. 